What's the word, y'all? For the last, like, month, two months, we kind of assumed that we knew the 10 teams in each conference that was going to make the play in, right? These top 10 and these top 10. But look who it is out of nowhere. Just one game behind the Golden State Warriors to potentially cause Adam Silva to have, a, have an aneurysm. The Houston Rockets is here, and the Warriors might be in trouble. I mean, listen, the play-in is the best thing Adam Silver has done as a commissioner from all aspects of it. Winner go home games are amazing. You're seeing that in March Madness as they're putting up all-time numbers as far as the viewer base. And in a season three to four years ago, if it, the play-in didn't exist, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Steph Curry would be missing the playoffs right now. That is something Adam Silver definitely don't want. And the Rockets might be spoiling the legendary LeBron versus Steph Curry winner go home game. Now, I don't have a dog in this fight. I don't care who makes it, who doesn't make it. But things are very interesting right now. Last night, the Golden State Warriors played against the Minnesota Timberwolves. And shout out to the Timberwolves. They continue to, to be great, even without Carl Anthony Towns. And last night, there was a moment in it where I was like, oh, my God. Anthony Edwards took like an ill-advised three-point shot. And I thought it could have cost them the game. It did not. They closed it out. And I'm sure a lot of the conversation today revolving around this game, uh, especially now that the Houston Rockers are, again, one game behind the Warriors, is about the rotation piece of the Golden State Warriors right now. So last night, they were up by five with four minutes left in the third quarter. This is where Steph Curry he got his rest um I think this is relatively normal for the Warriors where he sits the last couple minutes of the third quarter but he did not check back in to 654 654 left in the fourth quarter and at that point that five point lead that they had was now a five point deficit and that can matter a lot when you're the Golden State Warriors, which is just not a good team right now. Now, that's not the reason why they have not looked amazing. It's maybe just one of the factors in a lot of different things. Because uh, even the game before that, when they played against the Indiana Pacers, it was just a rough watch. The Pacers had it been playing amazing basketball, specifically Tyrese Halliburton had it been playing amazing basketball. It felt like a very winnable game. But in that, they let the rope go. And again, the timing could not be any worse. Like Steph Curry is not having an amazing month. Last night, again, he was really good. I think 31 points or something like that. But this month, for Steph Curry has not been uh, the Steph Curry that you are accustomed to, right? 22 points per game, 40% from the field, 36% from three. Again, last night he was really good. But for the most part of this month, he's been he's been struggling. And I'm only comparing Steph Curry to Steph Curry, right? A lot of other players in the league, if they put up these numbers, we like, oh my God. But for Steph Curry, when this team needs him to be Superman, he just can't be Superman every single night. And that is part of the problem. They don't have a lot of people over there that can really hold it down if Steph is having a bad stretch. But I don't really care too much to talk about the Warriors and their struggles because I'm more intrigued by the team that is creeping up the Houston Rockets. Yup, you clicked this video thinking we were talking about the Warriors. No, we really talking about the Rockets. Now, a lot of y'all know that when I watch NBA games, I have a document and I take notes on the games that I'm watching. It's a full document of pretty much every game I've watched this season. And sometimes my bullet points can be very, very simple. Sometimes it can be very complex. Here are, are like the foot, uh, the clip notes version of the things I've seen in the Houston Rockets during their stretch. Now, I have not watched every single win on this current streak, but the, these are my first notes. The first note, obviously they have Alperen Shingun out for some time. I don't think it's been officially announced out for the season, but the injury looked bad. It said it was a too, nothing too, too crazy, but we don't know. But now that Alperen Shingun is not playing, they have the ability to, to literally switch everything and they have been maybe not everything but they're switching a crazy amount and I wish I had like second spectrum which is like this big old statistical thing where I could kind of because they track everything I can track how often they're switching now versus when Alperen Shingun is playing but the defense was already really good this season that's why they were able to play solidly for the for the uh, beginning of the regular season it looks even better now because they have really plus defenders and they're switching a lot I'm gonna jump around here a little bit part of that is Jalen Green and I know Jalen Green is having a, an explosion of an offensive output right now, which is amazing to see. I've said this before, that Jalen Green was one of those great spots in my NBA knowledge where I would rock, watch the Houston Rockets, and I still couldn't tell you if I believe he was going to be a future All-Star, or was he going to end up like uh, uh, Jordan Clarkson? Was he going to be a Jamal, a Jamal Crawford type of player? I couldn't really bridge the gap to having a formal opinion. And, and I'm starting to, to figure that out right now. I'm starting to, now I might be late to the party. Y'all maybe already made your decision on what Jalen Green could or couldn't be. I'm starting to turn the corner to realize what he could be as a player. Here's his game log. <laughs> 28 points per game this month. 51% from the field, 41% from three. And the scoring aspect is dope, right? Obviously, they need more scoring output with Alperen Shingun going down, and he's been taking the reins on that. I mean, the game that I watched recently was against the Cavs, where he shot 9 of 20, which was um, 
45%, but it was such a good game for Jalen Green. Then he had a couple 40 pieces after that. The scoring thing is the scoring thing, right? Jalen Green came into the league as a guy that a lot of people projected to be able to score in bunches. We knew that. Um, it's just about getting his efficiency down, whatever, whatever. The things that I'm enjoying most about Jalen Green, there's two aspects of it. I think his progression as a defensive player in this season alone needs to be talked about more. I did a segment on my podcast, right, where I was trying to, again, do what I've been trying to do. We were trying to figure out where Jalen Green is going to sit as the NBA player. So for three games straight, I watched Jalen Green. I didn't watch the Houston Rockets. I tuned into their games earlier in the season where I didn't care about the other nine people on the court. My eyes were locked on and glued on to Jalen Green. And I was disappointed in his defensive output, his rotations, his IQ on the defensive side of the ball because he has the tools, right? He's a thin frame 6'4 guard, so he's limited in, in, in a little bit, but he's one of the fastest players in the league. We see on the offensive side that he has just all of the tools to be at least the average to plus defender and in that three game stretch that I watched I was highly disappointed I've watched a lot of this team during this run and it's night and day now he's he's not out there looking like a prime Jimmy Butler he's not looking like Kawhi Leonard but that improvement from being like I'm super disappointed to oh he's average to sometimes above average is night and day so that's the one thing about Jalen Green's game that I've loved this month the second thing is the decision making in my notes, it's, oh, I thought it was a little bit more complex than that. In my notes, it says Jalen Green is not forcing it as much. That is good enough for me. There are times where they're running some pick and roll actions, which is also a part of my notes. I'm in Thompson as a screener has become this thing that they didn't use a lot this season to now that they don't have another big on the court. He's the, the role man uh, or the screener a lot of the times where he would turn a corner. Jalen Green is turning the corner. And instead of just thinking me, 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 he's making the right decision. And sometimes the decision is me, 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 because I am on a burner and there's not a lot of people that can contest me at the rim. But other times, I'm seeing them make the right play. And the right play doesn't necessarily translate to getting a bunch of assists a lot of the times, right? But Jalen Green getting the hockey assists or just setting his team up even better is things that he struggled with earlier in the season. And I'm seeing him turn. And that is amazing to see. I, this morning, as I woke up, I saw a clip of Sham Sharania talking about how the Houston Rockets offered Jalen Green plus draft capital for Mikael Bridges and the, the Brooklyn Nets said no. I don't know how that's going to age, but right now, whoo, that they luck out because Jalen Green looks phenomenal. Yeah, in that Cavs game, there are a lot of times where they were trying to force the ball out of Jalen Green's hands, where they were sending two defenders at him, and again, making the right decision. I want to talk about Ahmed Thompson as a screener because the game has opened up so much more for him. Um, him and his brother, obviously, play very similar styles. Get real soon, Nassar, uh, because that's some scary stuff. I hope you're doing well. But Ahmed Thompson having the space to be the role man, and I mean, he's one of the best offensive rebounding wing slash guards and all the basketball there's just so much opportunity and I think the 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 outcomes are very endless for Ahmed Thompson um God forbid he learns how to shoot a little bit it's gonna be dangerous for the league because everything everything else about his game is top level as a as a rookie right he's a good decision maker he's one of the better defenders in all the basketball already he's a right place right time type of player crashes the glass he does everything you can imagine for a player except for shoot the three-point ball. And again, he's, what, 19, 20 years old? Like, there's a lot of time for him to continue to develop, and you're seeing some of this stuff now. Um, Jock Landale, also in my notes, real rotational player in basketball. I'll just leave it at that. But there's a lot of conversation about, ooh, is it, co is it a coincidence that the team is playing a lot better now that Alperen Shingun is out? I, I would say yes. <laughs> I'm definitely not about to go to the trade finder and, and figure out who wants Alperen Shingun because they have a nine-game stretch where they look amazing. Um, but I, I think the best thing about it is that it shows that this team doesn't have to have a single identity, right? Oh, okay, the single identity is that we're going to be a really good defensive team. But they have other ways to play on the offensive side of the ball instead of it being like, if Alperen Shingun's not in the game, we don't really know what to do. And I'm not saying that's what it was, but we, now we have this small ball, we switch everything, uh, orchestration of players that we can run out when Alperen Shingun comes back whether it be at the end of this season or uh, next season. And it's a testament to Ime Udoka, right? Ime Udoka has these guys playing. I don't think anybody really expected them to be this good. I know they started off well when they were one of the top seeds and then struggled the middle part of the season. But I think it just opens up the door to different ways to run a team and do a rebuild, right? The traditional way to do a rebuild is that we're going to be really, really bad for five to ten years. No, we're going to be really, really bad to like, I think the perfect rebuild that the GMs want to say is like, we have three really bad years. We draft well in those three years and then boom, we're back into playoff contention. And the Rockets had, what, four years of them being bad post James Harden? 
no, not four years. They had um, three years, and then now we're here. They had three really bad years, and those years were, again, terrible. They got top picks in those years. Um, and instead of saying, like, okay, we're still going to be this super young uh, team, we got money to spend. And they laughed at the Fred Van Vliet contract because he's Fred Van Vliet. He's a one-time All-Star. You're giving him that much money? They laughed at the Dylan Brooks contract because people on Twitter was telling him that he got to learn Chinese after the playoffs last year. But they've built a culture by bringing in one of the better coaches and some good vets. Jeff Green left a championship team to come here because the, the bag was a little bit nicer here. But also you can tell that that man has, has changed a lot of stuff with this team. I've always said this, Jabari Smith Jr. is one of my favorite young players in basketball because that guy plays winning ball. And I guess we haven't seen it on a big scale just yet because they have not played a playoff series. But I feel so confident in his ability to not really hurt you when it matters the most. So there's just a lot of stuff going on with the Rockets. Will they take what the, the, the Golden State Warriors tend to see? I don't really know. Here's the strength of schedule for the rest of the season. Right now, the Rockets have the 11th hardest schedule left. They still got to go against OKC once, Minnesota, the Clippers. They still got Dallas twice, Orlando, and then the Miami Heat. They still got four games against two of the bottom feeders out west, so they hopefully should take care of business. But if you look down here to 2015, is the Warriors. So the Warriors have an easier schedule. Both have 12 games left. Again, who knows? It's, it's the NBA. It's basketball. Anybody can win on any given night. Um, I'm not here to make a prediction. I'm just here to shed some light on some of the cool stuff happening in the association. And the Houston Rockets streak right now is one of the coolest things happening. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Will the Warriors retain that spot? Do you think the, the Rockets have a real chance of taking it? I'll be down in the comments reading, and, and I'll see y'all soon.